Welcome to Proceeding Boldly's new series, where we give a behind-the-scenes look at what's involved in the USF football weekends. This is the Inside View. On the beautiful day of October 10th, the USF Bulls skirmished against the East Carolina Pirates. Let's get into some ECU history real quick. The football team was originally called the Teachers, and they played five games in 1932. However, they didn't score a single point, and they let up 187 points. That's not a good margin. Maybe it's because they were called the Teachers. I mean, who's going to be intimidated by that? But they eventually did change their name to the Pirates because of their proximity to the coast, and they started winning some games. Uh, last year we played a great game and got the win against them. Unfortunately, this year they got some revenge. But as per usual, there are positives, so let's hop into the game prep. Started off the day in a good mood, you know? A little bit of a dance right there. Wish I was still feeling like that after the game, but it was fun while it lasted. Everything at the facility was pretty much the same, as it always is. Got the old corona test. Guess what? Time to get COVID tested for the 21st time. Shockingly, that's not exaggeration. I've actually been COVID tested 21 times. And that one made the eyes water a little bit. And they didn't give me a sanitation baggie. What's going on here? Sean seems to always do something funny at breakfast unknowingly. This time he broke his mask three seconds after putting it on. And Holden had to help him out. <laughs> help him out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> After that, we finished our Friday preparation, so let's cut to the travel clock. Nope, nope, wait. Pub sub run. We went ahead and dropped in at Kenny's place of employment to take advantage of the chicken sub deal. You can get us a discount though, right? No. You can get us a discount? No, you see, I can't get a discount, but we do have the $2 off. Man. All right, I'll take the $2 off. $2 off that. of the uh, sub deal. All right, Rose, I need you to say hello to the Proceeding Boldly viewers, okay? Who? The Proceeding Boldly viewers. Who is that? Just say hello, Just say hello boldly. Proceeding Boldly. Yeah. Hello, Proceeding Boldly. There we go. There we go. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Thank you. You have a good day, all right? All right, we're good now. Go ahead and roll the travel collage. Not as much to roll this time around, since it's such a quick trip to the hotel when we have home games. And we got a later start, so our evening was filled with food and meetings until we finally made it up to our rooms that night and this drama unfolded. What do we say to Ian, Kenny? Tell him about the day, Ian! Yes. Yes. Tell him! <laughs> them boys are <laughs> Horrible! Horrible! <laughs> yes, sir! $280 million team can't make it past the <laughs> race. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh my gosh. Where's, where's the uh, dog at? They need to call Andre Iguodala on LeBron James. He started them for tons of years. Bam out of bio, cannot let Anthony Davis get the f***ing rebound. Go! Double the mother Double the mother Double the mother I don't care. You gotta be You gotta... Oh my... I swear to God. That's another thing. Spencer, do you miss the second free throw on purpose right here? No, you don't. Let me just enlighten you on my thinking behind this, okay? He makes both free throws, right? They throw it down to LeBron. LeBron muscles whoever's guarding him. LeBron hits a fadeaway to tie it. He doesn't have the opportunity to do that if he misses this on purpose. It's going to be a half-court shot. Yeah, that's a fadeaway. It's not a desperate spare. They. This is where Taco Fall is. Like, that's what I'm saying. You tell him to miss it. Tell him to miss it. If I'm them, I'm totally going to miss it, man. Peg that right at the rim. And now look, they're bringing LeBron and AD down. That's what I'm saying. Like, put them on LeBron or AD, one of the two. See, look, they got LeBron and AD down there. Let's go! go! Oh, the, the, the Lakers don't lose in the mama jerseys. Game day. And before we head to the stadium, let's see how the family spent pregame. Hi guys, Sophie here. We are at Mr. Dunderback's right now. We as in mom, dad, and Bobby. And we're here to get some authentic German food.
Well, that was a lovely German song. And once again, why does my family always choose the best places to eat when I'm not with them? Sophie looks like she's about to crush this meal, and I don't blame her. Back to us. On the way out of the hotel, we said goodbye to our deceased friends and hit the road. Quick arrival to the stadium, and now it's game time. We were confident going into this game. Unfortunately, they just got the early jump on us, got off to a lead, and we had a tough time recovering. We did have some good moments, though, and I was proud of... Oh, look at this guy. Is he a mascot or a player? That is a true pirate right there. Hey, what's up, Lump? Looking good, bro. Jordan got a little confused here, started warming up with his left hand. Kaboom! There is the opening kickoff, and the game is on. I thought that Jordan did really well this game. He generated some offense for us, made some really good passes, including this one, which is really big, to the tight end Brinkman. After you go down 3-0 to get that momentum back and put us in the red zone is a big deal. Johnny Ford finishes this one off for us. Sprints in there for the touchdown. Oof, almost takes out the referee. That was a close one. And that's big. Up 7-3 to three at this point. Things are going well. After the touchdown, tried to crush this one and did. Unfortunately, a line drive right to the guy. And so at this point, I'm thinking, oh boy, he's going to run it back. So I just sprint over there, make the best play that I can, clip them out of bounds. Luckily, it was not a repeat of what happened last year. And I avenged myself slightly on that play. I guess he just didn't expect me to take off like that. Because I was able to get him out of bounds and he didn't really try to dodge all that much. I get a little ninja roll right there at the end. Fast forward a little bit and unfortunately we're down at this point. EC was playing well. But Jordan makes this great pass and the catch is even better. Really impressive to pull that in. Bang, 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 bang. Here's another really good play from Jordan. Chucks it downfield and OD with a really good catch. I almost thought he was going to get away because of that move right there. But unfortunately, they grabbed up his legs and they were able to get him down. But that's another momentum changer right there. It's still a, a fairly close game at this point. We did a good job finishing off this drive. This little run from Johnny Ford helps. Gets us really close about the six-yard line. And on the very next play, Johnny Ford gets the handoff again, evades that guy, and scampers down the sideline. I thought he was out of bounds, but look at this. He makes an incredibly athletic play to stay in bounds and get in there for the touchdown. Everyone's happy. Everyone's excited. Roar! Watch this play one more time, though. Tip-toe, 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 dive. So athletic. Why do you dive feet first like that? That was so cool. So Mr. Sackett comes onto the field, and we line up like we're doing a regular kickoff. But instead, we do a little chip over to the right side. And Zay jumps up, karate kick things. The ball comes out, and we jump on it. So we think that we have it. It was almost a perfect kick. The ball gets deflected, and we jump, jump on it. So everyone on our team thinks that we have it. But a flag is thrown, so no one knows what's going on. Nick is over here with the finger gun, pointing our direction, basically signaling that we have it. Coach Scott is very confused. He's looking around. He thinks that we have it. Gets a little too close to the officials. They, okay, step back, step back. You can't do that. Okay, step back. So he goes back. Nick is still signaling that we have the ball. But what they call is interference. I guess you can't, you have to give the defense a chance to grab the ball. And we didn't. And so we ended up getting the weirdest penalty of all time, which is, I guess, officially a kick-catch interference. Never seen that before. But still a fun play. So unfortunately, we didn't get the momentum gain, but we still had some really good plays, including this completion to Trell that put us up field and put us in a position to possibly get a field goal before the end of the half. Then we follow up with another really good pass play, getting us deep into the enemy's territory. We go ahead and practice our drill where we spike the ball and we set up to take the field goal. ECU tries to ice Jared, but it does not matter because his veins are colder. He lines up and my computer decides to glitch out here for whatever reason, but he drills the kick and that ends the half with a little bit of positivity. Unfortunately, that's really where the positivity ends. But our friend, Bucky Scribb, makes it onto the field. This guy can, is confused. He doesn't know where to go. And I was really excited that Kenny got to go out there and, and do his thing because he absolutely hits a beautiful punt right here. High, tight spiral. 
40 something yards and they don't get a very good return on it. So really cool to see Kenny perform well like that. On the flip side, Sean Atkins gets into the game, decides he's going to go block this punt and the shield says no, picks him up in the air and not sure what happened after that because the camera cut, but I can confirm that he is still with us. So all good. Other than that, we have another really good return from John O'Ford Jr. Runs over there, gets to about the 45, 50 before he gets pushed out of bounds. He's been just killing it on these kick returns. And he's not the only one because here we have another return from Jaquez Evans this time, who basically takes a straight line up the field. And no, the ghost got him. Oh, got him again there. No, what is up with the tripping? The ghosts, man, they're just... They're out for us. It's okay. It was a good run. Good job, Quez. It is now the end of the game, and the band is still playing, albeit a little less voraciously than before. But we cap off the night with this really good drive by Noah, shows his speed and athleticism and gets in there for the touchdown, and also shows that there are still positives that come out of every game, no matter what happens. When you do come across hard times, the support of your family and friends is huge. And I just want to thank all of our supporters that we have at USF because they make our job more fun and they also make us want to work harder to improve, to put out better performances. And so we appreciate all the parents that come out, all of the siblings that come out. We appreciate these beautiful ladies right here, this dude in the back with the Corona hat that looks a little bit intoxicated. These two fans paint themselves green and gold for every single game, actually. Uh, let us know in the comments below if you know who they are. I'd like to reach out to them. Oh, here we go. The fans are still dancing. I actually know her. That's Marissa. She's one of our biggest fans. Keep dancing, Marissa. We're going to try to score some more touchdowns for you next time. Okay, quick reflection time. I stay positive because focusing on the negatives is only necessary when you utilize that to learn and improve yourself. And that's what I feel like we've done after that game. Obviously, we need to perform better and we need to go out and get those wins, but it will come. And I can't wait to produce the next video for you guys. Appreciate all of your support and proceed boldly.